Hello Desert Egg, I'm Anya Carlson, the historian for the Desert Egg AMA Club. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you. DETV starts right now. Hello, and welcome to DETV. I'm Von Hobrich. And I'm Carla Arias. On today's show, we have all the info on the latest DE news. And as always, we have sports and history. But first, let's get to today's announcements. Tryouts for the DE Palm team are coming up soon. If you have school spirit and enjoy dancing, then this is the team for you. There will be a tryout meeting on Friday, April 9th at 3.45 p.m. in the auditorium. During the meeting, coaches will go over all the requirements for palm tryouts. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at DEHS Varsity Palm to stay up to date with tryout information. And this just in, a direct message to DETV from Mrs. Jones and the administration says, and I quote, because so much learning time was lost this year during the COVID-19 epidemic, summer break has been canceled and all students must return in-person learning on campus at the end of this grading period. In addition, in July, each student will complete a 300 question exam with questions drawn from all the topics covered on their remote learning classes. Let's look at a full screen graphic showing the official announcement from the administration. <coughs> ha, gotcha, April Fools. Summer break is not canceled and it's only six weeks away. You had me worried, Carla, but it wouldn't be an April Fool's Day show without one fake news story. One thing that isn't canceled is DE Sports Action. And as the temperature begins to heat up, so does the spring sports action. Here's Marco with more. Thanks, Vaughn. Now on to today's sports scores. The girls' tennis team took home the win yesterday against Verita's Prep with a final score of 4-1. to And the boys' baseball team took on Buckeye on Tuesday night and beat them by a score of 12-1. to The boys came out hot, scoring six runs in the first inning never looked back. Last night, the Scorpions took on Deer Valley in a very well-played game on both sides, but the boys eventually came out winning 5-2, to two, which moves the record from 4-4 four to four to 5-4. to four. And that's all I have for you guys today, and you guys have a good rest of your week. Now it's time to get caught up on what's going on in the state, nation, and world. Nathan has been scouring the news to get the latest stories. What's going on in the world, Nathan? Thanks, Carla. Today we have a story on the first vaccine for animals. A Texas facility holding more than 4,000 immigrants and a story on a mafia fugitive who was caught how you would never guess. Let's get right into it, starting with the story about the first vaccine for animals. Russia has registered the world's first animal vaccine against COVID-19. Carnivac Cove was developed by Russia's Federal Center for Animal Health. Russian state media tasks reported Wednesday, so far it's the world's first and only product for preventing COVID-19 in animals. Clinical trials began last October and the research involved dogs, cats, foxes, arctic foxes, minks, and other animals. Russian scientists say the use of the vaccine can prevent further mutations of the virus. In May, Denmark killed 17 million minks over concerns that animals were spreading a mutated form of coronavirus. The vaccine will likely go into mass production as early as April. A border facility in Donna, Texas is currently holding more than 4,100 immigrants. The majority of these housed in the facility are unaccompanied children, some of whom have been held for more than 15 days. That's significantly longer than the 72-hour legal limit for non-adults. There has been a surge of migrants arriving in the U.S., which is overwhelming resources. Officials say migrants usually spend about 133 days at the facility in Donna. As of Sunday, the U.S. government reports there were nearly 6,000 migrants in the Customs and Border Protection's custody. 
An alleged mafia fugitive on the run for years has finally been caught in the Dominican Republic. He wasn't cooking up any new schemes. Mark Fern Claude Barat ended up giving away more than recipes by cooking Italian dishes and sharing them on YouTube. He didn't show his face in the videos, but his distinctive tattoos caught police attention. Italian authorities said Barat was involved with drug trafficking between the Netherlands and Italy. That's all for World News today. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day. Now let's move on from the headlines of today to the headlines of the past. Jaden, our resident DETV historian, has been searching for historical events that happened on this day way back when. Our today's story has something to do with Desert Edge. Jaden? That's right, Vaughn. On this day in 1938, an alien saucer crashed in the place where Desert Edge stands right now. If you look at this photograph that I am revealing now, as you can see, the aliens are just exiting the clouds above the old school. The government tried to hide this from us, but the aliens were using alpha particles as their fuel, which is part of ionizing radiation. This is the real reason Sweep is there. It's, it is a check for signs of radiation. I just, of course. That's all for me. Back to you. That does it for today. Remember, you can send us requests, suggestions, story ideas, and announcements to detv2012 at gmail.com. Until next time, I'm Von Hobrich. And I'm Carla Arias Moreno. Have a great day, Scorpions.